So Krista, um, first of all, talk about, you're, you're kind of the 30,000 foot view. You see a lot of customers in government, um, business, healthcare, energy. Talk about what you see as what com most companies are dealing with, like the top priority issues around this realizing the value part, and then we'll get it going that way. Sure, be happy to. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. So uh, IBM, uh, uh, last two years, we've partnered with MIT Sloan to do a survey of about 4,500 companies, leading companies around the globe, to make sure that we are regularly getting a feel of how companies are using analytics to drive value. Um, and one of the things we look is how the co what's consistent about the companies who really are transforming themselves to create value with not just big data analytics, but analytics in general. What we find is consistent across all the companies that are doing this well is that it's not, they don't focus on the data and they don't focus on the analytics. They use them effectively, but what they focus on is what are the business decisions that I make each day that I want to make more efficiently and more effectively. And it really starts with defining those decisions that you want to improve. That's the key to getting value. And, and it's not just the content of those decisions, it's the timing of those decisions. And what I mean by that is, if you think of the analytics that would be needed to improve a decision, um, when, at what point do I have the data that I think is most relevant to that decision? Do I have that data a second before I have to make that decision? If someone comes to my website and I need to decide what's the next screen that they see, I might have a few milliseconds to respond. How do I build models that can respond and take in all that information? Maybe have a good understanding of a customer profile in advance, combined with what they've said on, on that initial screen. How do I respond to that in real time? Or is it a planning process? How am I going to plan my overall supply chain network? How am I going to plan my overall marketing? Campaign? So the timing of these decisions that you're trying to affect with analytics becomes very important. So it is all about framing the decision first. And I think a lot of companies that I talk to um, sometimes are focused more on the how and the type of analytics and how they want to make use of big data. And, and it comes back to effective use of big data analytics sometimes means realizing when you don't necessarily need big, big data. Uh, not all decisions require big data. Many do. And you need to know how to find that balance. So um, when we talk about big data, we generally define it in terms of the three V's. Um, and one of the V's is not victory. But um, so the first V is volume, so volume of data. We're talking about petabytes. Um, that usually, to get to become big data, we're talking the petabyte realm. The, the second V is velocity, the speed of data. If you're dealing in an operation where you're dealing streaming data, where the data is coming in fast and furiously on a second by second basis, streaming data, that's another way to categorize big data. And finally, third is variety. And, and this is really one of the most important areas of big data analytics today, which is looking at both unstructured, which includes text, voice, video, and social media, and combining that with structured data, some of those structured fields that reside in databases. And what we see today is that a lot of companies have separate groups or parts of the organization that focus on either or. There's the people that are analyzing the structured data, and there's other people that are using tools to analyze the unstructured data in a lot of cases. And the, the companies in our surveys that are making the most out of are the ones that combine those two. Newton, so talk about, talk about <laughs> Mr. Newton, um, uh, what is it and why is it a data company? And what's, what's the, the, the kind of the the goal here. Newton is an educational technology platform company. Uh, we're really focused on, uh, on creating highly personalized learning for uh, every student um, in a very, very big way. Um, you can imagine it as kind of a, a, uh, a large uh, educational recommendation system where um, as students are uh, trying to learn a, a particular subject. Um, we're taking data about um, what they do, how they interact with the system when they're logged in, when they're not, all of the usual kinds of, uh, of information about that. What they look at, how long they spend, uh, how they perform uh, when uh, asked questions or engaged with activities about particular content. Um, combined with all sorts of data about the content itself. Are they watching a video or, or is it a piece of text? Is it a lot of text? Are they reading a chapter and then doing some exercises? Or are they engaged in a kind of question and answer 
here's a little bit of instruction and here's a little bit of evaluation. So we sift through all of the available uh, possible resources for the student uh, in terms of instruction or assessment uh, and try and select the very next best thing for them to do, whether it's studying this particular concept in this particular way or uh, going and talking to this group of people to get some help on this particular thing uh, or tracing back to uh, review something uh, that they had been exposed to a week before in order to help make the transition from short-term into long-term memory. Newton's used right now at, ASU, at Arizona State University by incoming freshmen who need remedial help in math. But, t but talk about um, uh, how it might, what you're doing might equate to what's going on in, like, in the business world with, with a data system or a data set. Right. So one of, the, one of the key things, and Chris touched on this, is to ask the questions up front about what it is that you care about, what business decisions you need to make. Um, one, of the, one of the real keys there is, is to clearly articulate what it is that you, want to, that you want help with from the data. That enables you uh, to identify what data matters. Uh, it, identify, it, it enables you to then uh, identify what models are appropriate. Um, and I think probably, um, perhaps even more importantly, uh, what it does is it forces you to articulate the underlying assumptions uh, that you're making about uh, uh, your business um, that uh, you can then use to test and validate the model. Um, because at the end of the day, what matters is that, in fact, you are improving uh, the particular aspects of your business that you care about. In our case, that we're improving the rate at which students learn. So news.me, talk about uh, what you're doing, what it is, and uh, how social data may change the news business. Sure. Um, like, like it hasn't already. Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say it already has. Um, there's, a, there's actually a saying. That, um, so uh, news.me is a Betaworks company, and Betaworks is this kind of weird incubator VC thing in the, uh, in the West Village. Um, and there's a saying at Betaworks that your comment about how everything is software re reminded me. And the saying is, um, I actually don't know who to attribute it to, which is actually fitting uh, given the structure of the internet. But um, the all, internet, all media is internet media, and the internet is social. The revolution is over. The internet is one. Um, there's, a, there's a notion. We're using words um, you know, to, to describe publishers, pages, categories, things that are based on assumptions um, that no longer hold true, assumptions that were built on a set of economic and technological constraints that are uh, not in existence anymore. And so part of our challenge and part of what we're trying to do is challenge those assumptions. Um, and, and, and so to give you a concrete example, um, the, the way that people are finding news and talking about news um, is changing. Uh, it used to be the case that we would find news in, in private and go into a public space and talk about it. So in that sense, news has always lent itself to a social experience. Um, then we searched for news, right? So um, when Google uh, emerged as the dominant way that people discovered content, we would indicate kind of what we're interested in, and Google would return um, some information to us. Um, and then, you know, uh, and, then, and then we decided that it was actually more efficient to um, what people are doing on Twitter and Facebook now is they're positioning themselves in a network, right? So um, if the purpose of news is to talk about news, the purpose of consuming news is to talk about news. And I mean talk about in a very kind of broad sense everything from around the water cooler to who do I vote for and kind of how do I interact with the people around me at work. Um, then, the, uh, then aligning the way that you consume um, based on conversations that are happening uh, with people that you're interested in is actually a more natural way to, to discover content. Um, so, so the way that we think about, I mean, the words, the words that you were using were interesting, right? Optimization and, uh, and, and kind of delivering value to, to customers. Um, those are words uh, that make sense in a world where um, publishers are the only people with megaphones and they're speaking to a mass audience. Um, the world that we're entering and the world that maybe we're already in is a world where publishers are mere participants in a conversation um, where, uh, where big data and analytics and understanding traffic and page views and all that stuff, what it comes down to is are you listening to the people on the other side of the table? And you can't have a good conversation if you're not listening. Um, and so, so that's how kind of we're thinking about publishing and the evolution of the media industry at the highest level. Um, News.me uh, is a six-month-old startup, so um, we're kind of in the process of taking those big ideas and figuring out how do they fit into a product. The problem that we're solving uh, out of the gate is so we have an iPhone app and an email product, and 
Um, and the email product is the simplest thing. It, it, it looks at the, at the links coming through your Twitter and Facebook streams from the last 24 hours and gives you the five things that you should read. Um, and so this is solving uh, an obvious problem for people. Um, there is, there's a, Twitter is a brilliant uh, application. I think it's the best manifestation of this notion of kind of positioning yourself in a network for the discovery of content. Um, but it's also overwhelming. And so what we're doing is we're surfacing uh, content that your friends are, are kind of talking about the most. Um, and so this is, again, about, um, about optimizing for the conversation, not optimizing for um, kind of traffic pages, et cetera. Um, what you said was fascinating, that, that you can't be a publisher without listening. But I assume that the same would go for a business. You can't be a business without exactly, listening. Exactly. And we're, and we're kind of, I mean, as a six-month-old startup, uh, we're going to die if we don't listen to, li we will literally not be in business if we're not listening to our customers. And so part of that is grabbing them and saying, like, how are you using this application? What, what's working? What's not? And part of it is digging deep into, into usage data and understanding kind of how are, where are people spending their time in the application and trying to derive some insights to help guide our product development process.